Before their game on Christmas Day, the Celtics lost their first three outings with the Time Lord to Orlando twice and then to Indiana, all at home. Before getting Rob Will back, they were blown out by Golden State. That said, losing three straight didn't tear this team apart, as the reigning East champs have maintained the number one spot in the East after bouncing back with consecutive double-digit wins over the Timberwolves and Bucks. You're about to see a breakdown of Boston's most recent W against 2021's NBA champions and the Milwaukee Bucks. Right quick, according to YouTube's analytics, just 11.8% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. So, Jalen Brown nearly ended the career of Brooke Lopez with a poster, JB did miss three consecutive free throws to end the first half. Jason Tatum led the way with 41, caught a body on Giannis. Credit to Giannis for challenging. I think 90% of players right here would have let it be a wide open jam. Prior to that, Sam Hauser hit a buzzer beater to end the first quarter, and Malcolm Brogdon was outstanding off the pine. Key role players in Al Horford, Derek White, and Grant Williams made crucial three-point bombs in quarter number three, giving the Celtics a double-digit lead entering the fourth quarter, where they ultimately cruised past the middleton list Milwaukee Bucks. The Celtics were playing with a fearless level of confidence, not settling for too many jumpers, and mixing up their offense fluidly, of course running everything through Tatum and Brown, proving the Celtics are taking care of the Rock much better for the most part under Coach Mazzula than under Coach Udoka is that they rank second in assist to turnover ratio among all teams, a stat they ranked number 14 in last year. Give a lot of the credit for that to DPOY Marcus Smart, who, as I mentioned in this video right here, is valuing possession better than he has in his entire career up to this point. Jason Tatum's improved patience is also a reason for Boston only ranking behind Phoenix in assist to turnover over ratio. Even after the recently returned Joe Ingles forces Tatum to pick up his dribble right here, he just calmly finds an outlet and relocates to the corner, then gets it back for an overpowering take on the baseline, defining an elite score on all three levels, all to open up the second half, watch this smooth step back triple, then this fundamentally sound mid-range pull up, followed by this under pressure back end of the shot clock drive where he fends off the contact, not bad for a 19 year old. Jokes aside, Tatum's sixth year in the association has seen him mold into a top five player at the very least. I, I mean, this man's averaging over 30 points per game. League best second option Jalen Brown was forced into committing four turnovers in this one, which can't happen, but newsflash, with or without Chris Middleton, given they took three games from a Celtics team who got two wins from winning it all and have the second best record in the Eastern Conference after 33 games, Milwaukee's a damn good team. Boston just dropped 139 points on those Bucks, who own the fifth ranked defense in the league, beating them by over 20. However, the Philadelphia 76ers and Brooklyn Nets have both won eight games in a row now, so there can't be room for the slightest bit of complacency. Rob Williams was keeping possessions alive in the third quarter, Time Lord even scored on Giannis down low, and overall I thought it was an extremely productive outing for this man, specifically in the second half. Not only is Rob the main rim protector, but he's the primary lob threat, one of the reasons for the Celtics having the all-time greatest offensive rating before Williams got back was the amount of spacing they had. That said, they weren't the greatest defensively, and Williams is their best defender. In four games coming into this most recent one against Milwaukee, with Rob Will, Boston's defensive rating is good enough for 7th best, while without him, they'd rank at number 11. Rob's ability to get Boston extra possessions makes up for the lack of spacing he provides, and the fact that Time Lord can simply outjump the majority of NBA bigs with his standing reach, springiness, footwork, and activity, there's just so much this man brings to the table up front. Holding down Big Rob is something opposing centers lose sleep over. He saves Tatum and Brown so much stamina with his work on the backside, whether it's switching onto and shutting down smaller guards or playing solid drop coverage. When Boston needs to go small in the case of them needing their early season all-time great floor spacing, I'm sure we can trust Joe Mazzula to go to a lineup of, say, Grant Will at the five instead of Robert, but trust me, the grinded out style of basketball is what wins in the playoffs, and the Time Lord is the ideal modern day five man because of his all-around versatility. The perimeter mastery of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown continues to make them unquestionably the best one-two punch in the association, 
Nothing stopping these two generational wing players when they're locked in, and as I've mentioned before, when they're trying to outdo one another in the healthiest way possible, as they were against Milwaukee, Boston is like impossible to beat. Making a bona fide statement against the second ranked team in the conference, the Jays helped the Seas build upon their lead atop the East, approaching the midway point. They combined to score 70 points on Christmas Day at TD Garden. It's a Boston crowd that's gone through some hardships, having been inflicted by the undoings of three straight masterpieces in the finals from the Golden State Warriors, fueled by Stephen Curry and Andrew Wiggins. While the Dubs have no timetable for the return of those two players, and are sitting 11th in the Western Conference and three games under 500, the Celtics have established themselves as the early favorites to win 2023's championship. From the communication both offensively and defensively, to the well-coached and general-managed system, or the chemistry between the personnel 1-15 through 15, both on and off the hardwood, we're seeing a Celtic team with a proverbial chip on their shoulder after what went down last June. It was expected that when the Time Lord returned, at first Boston would initially struggle to get him involved. That learning curve's been somewhat overcome throughout the last two games against Minnesota and now Milwaukee, two teams that have been playing some good basketball as of late. So after three unacceptable losses to Indiana and Orlando twice, it's a good sign that Boston's not only swept those L's under the rug, but vacuumed them up. Who deserves more love on the Celtics? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Amino MMA, who says, if Halliburton doesn't become an all-star, all-star selections shouldn't be taken seriously anymore. He's the assist leader, a 21 point per game score on 62% true shooting. Those are elite stats and the eye test matches the output perfectly. His dribble, vision, and burst make him incredibly fun to watch, and I'm excited to see him develop further into a player that can possibly contend for all NBA in the future. Pause to read the rest of that great take. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.